Ah, the Rover 75 turned into the MG ZT. Now, it started from quite a humble platform. It looked quite sophisticated. It seemed alright. And then it was dropped. And then Rover suddenly realised that the basically they'd run out of money again, like they always do. And then BMW thought that, uh, you know, we could uh, maybe help you out for a bit. And then BMW got bored with them. And then they, for some reason, they thought they'd put a Mustang V8 in it that didn't really fit and didn't really work. I just, just don't understand where they were going with this car. It's just, it's absolutely incredible. And they're out of money again. So I would love to be at the boardroom where they're going, hmm, we, we need to do a redesign of this car. Let's have a think. Let's make it uglier than it was before. Yeah, well, we ain't got any money to do anything else. Let's just replace the bumpers. And then we got that. And what's the point? It's just, just make a car that was nice looking uglier. And I'd love to be... Uh, uh, <laughs> I just don't know at this point. <laughs> who, who red-lighted this? Good God. Hi there. Right, we've, got, we've been through the Jag. Now I think it's time we talk about the MG. Now, I'll give you a, a little walk round. Actually, let me think about it. Let's do that first, I think. Well, here's my MG, and uh, yes, it's not the standard-looking one. This is the V6 one, and I've had a lot of work done on it. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you a little secret now, and this is between you and me, and nobody else. I only paid 450 quid for it, because it needed a lot of work. But as you can see, I think it paid off. And now we can talk about the MG ZT, a kind of peculiar car because basically it's a Rover 75 um, un underneath, but there's a big but here. I'm not talking about uh, the Kardashians, but uh, yeah, there is a big but here. Uh, the handling is absolutely brilliant. I can't fault the car. Um, I have had an an Audi TT, well I've had two Audi TTs and you'd think they'd been pretty good wouldn't you? I had the 1800 Turbo one and the weird straight six one and you'd think yeah that'd be brilliant, they're not, they're crap. The MG is a is a unique car because it it has a transmission tunnel even though it's a trans, it, it's it, even though it's 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 front wheel drive, and I I've never understood that. But then, then, then they went and got complicated, and they put a V8 in it, didn't they? And they put a Mustang V8 in it, but they shouldn't have. For my money, let's talk about the engines now, shall we? Let's talk about performance. Let's talk about. You know, because that's the kind of car it is. It's it's a car that you want to perform. So let's talk about that. They had two diesel engines for for whatever reason. And now I'll never understand this. One put out a hundred and I a hundred and fourteen brake horsepower, and one put out a hundred and thirty. Just let that sink in. For whatever reason, they saw fit to have one that produced 15 brake horsepower less than the other one. I'm not quite getting it. Okay, so that's the diesels out of the way. Let's talk about the petrol engines. You got a 1.8 pushing out about about 120 and then they shoved a turbo on it and okay this is where it gets slightly different the 1.8 turbo could actually produce 200 brake horsepower um, there were what there was one for sale and uh, I've got to say I'm pretty impressed and if you get the 1.8 turbo even in its mm, normal form at the front 
pushing out 160 brake horsepower it's actually a really stable platform and actually the car balances out really nicely with it I've driven it so yeah okay let's get to the V60 shall we now I, <laughs> I am <laughs> so confused about what they did with the V6s they're Honda engines and you, you <laughs> I can't quite get my head round why you would do what you've done with them but they've done it they did it, it's, it's done <laughs> alright okay so <laughs> I just I can't I can't when I start talking about it I can't get my head round why you would do what they've done but they've done well anyway okay the V6s Honda V6 2.5 160 180 188 and 190 there you go that's it done now the performance let's talk about performance shall we I'm not going to I'm not going to go about on the V8 one because it's as far as I'm concerned it's an irrelevant car uh, but I will talk about it in a bit performance of the V6s the 160 it gets it, 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 it no no I should I should say let's let's go back let's go back to the diesel ones first not 60, about 11 seconds, do about 110. Yeah, not really impressed by that, are you? A lot of torque, and it feels faster than it is. And I'm being called. I will come back. Right, back again. Sorry about that. One of those things. Don't ask, alright? Just, just don't ask. Right, we talked about the diesel. Diesels. For some reason they had two different amounts of performance. I, I've never understood why. Let's get on to the 1.8. It's an old Rover engine. It comes back from a million years ago. Uh, and apparently it suffers from head gasket failure. Now... I've never had a head gasket failure with them. I've had seven MGs, and let me think of them. One, two. two of them have been 1800s. I've never had any issue with them. What I think it is, and I'm going to tell you now, is what you do is you drive it on, on choke, cold start, and you push it. Now, the engine is just pretty underwhelming. It's uh, only pushing out about 120 brake horsepower. It's not much. It's not uh, not an engine you'd want in a car. The, ca the car's too big for it. And I think that's where everybody makes that mistake. Now, let's get back to the V6s. Because I love the V6s. Because they're so stupid. I'll give you a walk round, but... They're not even V6s, they're like flat 6s. They, they, they don't even fit. <laughs> uh, Alright, okay. As I said, they did so many variations of them. Uh, performance wise, okay, let's get on performance for the V6s. The, the slowest one is 8.6, and the fastest one is 7.8. So they're, they're not much between it. They all knock up about 140. Um, that's about it. What more can I say? <laughs> There's no reason to variate the same engine so many times. It's, it's just... It's it's ridiculous. I, I can't... Alright, fine. And, okay. Let's talk about the V8 one. It's a Mustang V8. Uh, and it's a 4.7 or 4.6 can't remember one or the other and it's it's crap it's an, it's an overhead valve don't want to get down explaining to you what an overhead valve is if you don't know what an overhead valve is then I'm not going to explain it to you 
then you're you're watching the wrong video. That's how it goes. Uh, and it, <laughs> it pushes out a pitiful, and I mean pitiful, 260 brake horsepower. I've no, no, I, I haven't got any words to describe how pathetic that is. But at that point, MG and Rover didn't have any money. So what I would have done, this is me, this is what I would do, because you, you got a, 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 you could have just. Because it's transverse engine, you could have made it rear-wheel drive, which they did with the V8. Um, shoved a couple of turbochargers on it. I'm sure that would have been cheaper. And I reckon, I reckon, you'd have got about 300 brake horsepower out of that V6. Easy. But, we didn't go with that. But there you go. That's it. Done. Well, here's my uh, V6 uh, MG running. And I'm going to try and point out a few things. As you can see, the engine bay is quite cramped. And you can't really get a lot of work at it. Yeah, I'd always check that, see if it was uh, milky. Um, I've changed one of the uh, plugs at the back, but it was an absolute nightmare. This goes. Just believe it or not, the bottle that squeezes the water on your on, on your on your window, and it literally is a cable that runs under here, and because it's so close, it seems to rub away. I don't know why, but I've never had a car like it in my life. But yeah, so yeah, that 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 shores off, which is a shame. But it, it you know it's an easy, it's an easy fix, not a problem. They're quite clattery engines. And the intake manifold, um, and I had a problem with this. Yeah, that that went. It started leaking, and the car started overheating. So yeah, I'm so I'm sort of talking over myself, which is a shame. So that's better. So we'll take a look round on it. Uh, the alloys have all obviously been all resprayed. It's been tacked up. Uh, the bonnet's been sprayed. Uh, the rest of the car hasn't actually, believe it or not. It's actually been in relatively good condition. I put... Uh, oh well. I painted the calipers blue. Oh, just because I felt like it. And I don't make any difference to the car, but I just felt like doing it. They're a nice looking car. I, I think they're underestimated. And I think um, they should be appreciated a lot more than they are. Now I put a different exhaust on the back. The one that it come with was all rotten and rusty, so I thought I'd change it. I think they should have had two exhausts on the back. I know the V8 one did, but I thought the uh, V6, yeah, should have had two exhausts on the back. Now I've got the spoiler on mine as well, which is nice. And I think. To be fair to it, it's it's weather drive well for him. It's an 18 year old car, for God's sake, you know. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Come on. Right. Now, I've 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 changed the dashboard in terms of putting a DVD player in it. It's easy to do, it, it don't take much time. And as you can see it says Honda because the car is Honda really underneath in terms of the engine but I, I, I changed the trim to the, uh, the, the you know the fake wood look which I really like I don't know I not being funny I, I think it really really works with the car and then you've got the uh, titanium look on the top of the dashboard which I think they were going for which didn't really work for me because I just thought it was daft but you know, you know it's a Rover 75, so just not, just not play games here. But that's the dashboard you want to see, and mine's got the trip computer on it too, so I'm a lucky one. 
Uh, dual climate control. Where have we got yeah. anything about? Uh, I'm just going to just show you one more thing. Just show you the back. And actually, to be honest with you, it's actually quite comfortable. That's it. I'm done.